moves happen today. As you can see, NVIDIA had a big crash down. Apple actually at all-time highs today. Even DJT had a big pull down as well. Hit support and resistance levels pretty much perfect. We're going to go over those and the market move pretty decent today. Even the SP500 had a big drop today. We're going to go over that. All the big moves. Big moves, I think, will happen tomorrow as well. We're going to go over that as well. We're going to go over a lot of sectors. Bitcoin sector, the crypto stocks, oil, gold, the AI sector, and other sectors as well. The cannabis sector, energy sector. So it'll be a video probably around 25 to 30 minutes just make sure y'all stay tuned smash the like button subscribe if you are new thank you guys for being here let's get this video over 200 likes within seven hours y'all did it amazing yesterday let's do it again okay share the videos out and also comment the stocks you guys want in the next video At around the end of this video we'll go over the comments on the phone we'll go over the comments from the last video and see if there's any analysts on some of the stocks that y'all's commented, okay? But let's get straight into it. We're going to go over NVIDIA, NVDA. So NVIDIA had a big drop down today, okay? This is what we were kind of waiting on because we've been up too much, right? If you look at the daily chart, we kind of just been going up ever since with no real big pull down, even since about October 2nd, two weeks ago. We've been going up pretty vertical. So this is pretty normal, right? We need some of this to kind of balance it out. And it broke support at 133.40, which also since we were going to have a bigger pull down, if you go to the five minute chart, you see that support right there, this big drop, tried to hold it, it dropped right back down and it kind of just stalled out the rest of the day. The main drop was in the morning. Then after that, it literally did nothing all day today. Okay. So hopefully you weren't just wasting your time just staring at this. We got our trades in pretty early within like 20 minutes. We were already done trading. Make sure you guys join the team first in the description for prices to go up again in about six days. But support was 133.40. That is going to change. Also, when I want to buy more and also new plays, I'm looking for a video now that we have had the big drop. Because remember, since the video was going up, I didn't want to buy any more shares. I don't want to buy at high pricing because then you get trapped in this. That's the whole point of trying to avoid that, right? You're trying to avoid taking a big loss. So now that we're having that drop, now it gets a little more interesting. So all these levels are going to change. New resistance levels, support levels on NVIDIA stock. And also with long-term shares, I think our average is right around like 110. We bought on this drop right here. So we're already up on the long-term shares. I don't want to buy long-term shares anymore right now, not on NVIDIA uh, where we are now at price levels, okay? But new resistance level on NVIDIA is 137.30. So if that breaks, which will take me to my new plays, Watch out for that. Let's also change the support. Now, support isn't that clear. If I had to put a support, I would put one, maybe a smaller one right here. Remember, I do teach you how to find supports and resistance levels whenever you join personal training. That's also in the first link in the description. You'll see it on the website. 130.35, this is a smaller one. And then we'll see how this acts for tomorrow. But this is a smaller one. But if I had to put one, I will put 130.35. And resistance is 137.30. So any new plays or buys do I want to do? Whenever NVIDIA breaks this 137.30, that's when I believe NVIDIA will start going to all-time highs. Remember when it broke that 127? I told y'all it was going to turn bullish. It did that for a week straight, right? We played nothing but calls. But you have to be patient because it's too vertical. Like it gapped up um, on yesterday, and we had this big drop down today. So any new plays, I don't want to do in this range. I'm either going to do it once it breaks 137. That's when I'll get call options to go to all-time highs and so forth. But as we're down here, there's not much buying that I want to do in this range, okay? Like long-term shares, we already got a good average in, so we're good on that. Swing puts or anything, not really. This is only the first day drop. So for like swing puts, you want to really make sure that it actually wants to like continue dropping and not just like a 1-2-J drop because then you'll get murdered on those. So watch out for these levels right here on the video, and that's kind of how I'm looking to play it. Bigger uh, call options above here. Other than that, in here is kind of just we're trying to see how this or trade is going to end if it's going to really start bringing us down or is it going to hold support in here and then start going back up that would be optimal so and we already got the long-term shares amd this is exactly why i didn't want to buy amd we want to see what happened off that support it broke support today and it dropped even more remember i told y'all if it breaks support it's going around in this range all you got to do is move that circle over and boom, it's right in that range, okay? So it pretty much dropped an AMD perfect. This is also why I say never miss a video, A1 level, smash the like button, comment the stocks you guys want me to go in the next video. But it broke that support cleanly. If you go to the five-minute chart, look at that clean break of support. So that right there should tell us that maybe we shouldn't be trying to buy AMD today, okay? New support on AMD. I'm going to bring it all. There is a support. 
I would say about 156. It's like a, a smaller support, just like NVIDIA. So see how this acts tomorrow. Any buy-in on AMD, I don't want to do in this range just yet. Now, there is a potential put option that I want to do on AMD, but that's if we break 156 and we have to break below 150, then I'll be looking for put options to go to around 144. That is a potential play, but that play is somewhere in this area down here. So that's kind of a play I'm looking out for AMD. I think AMD might want to roll back over and actually turn back bearish. It's been bullish for about two months or so shorter term, but the longer term scale is bearish. So keep in mind of that, right? So watch that 156 uh, potential put options, but we just need to see how it acts as a support. And what, what would be the most ideal is if it ran up, down, ran back up, and then I would probably get puts there. Or if it ran down with a bigger retracement, I'll probably get puts there to really go down to about 144, which is the target I'm looking out for on AMD to the downside. But no long-term shares or anything like that right now. ABGO hit all-time highs. That's also why I told y'all be careful of like in this range because this is exactly what happened, this bigger pull down. You wanted to see what was going to happen um, before you start chasing this big movement right here. Remember, once it broke the resistance level, it was going to go to all-time highs. It did that. Now we have to wait for the next play to form, and AVGO is just not ready yet. I would put a support on here. I would say support is right around 169.80, 170. Kind of in that range, I would say watch for support right now on AVGO. That's pretty much it. I don't want to buy in this range. It's at all-time high, so it's a little too high for my liking. Um, Dell resistance, 128.40. Never really want to break that. Only tested it. Look, every time it broke it, it came right back below below it. You see that? That's a test. That's not a break. Even right here, tested it. Look at that. Came right back below it. So resistance level is still bringing price down on Dell. I don't want to buy Dell in this range. And yeah, it's really nothing on Dell that I like, if I'm being honest. Intel. Um, Intel had a little news. They partnered with AMD to improve x86 architect for AI, collaborating with major companies like Google and Microsoft on, on comp compatibility and software development. So they are partnering with AMD. Um, AMD has some drop, as y'all saw, and also Intel is having some drop as well. Watch that support level at 22.20. If that breaks, I'll probably sell the rest of my shares on Intel and I'll look for the next play. We're still up. Our shares are around like $21. So I think we're up maybe let's check real quick so if average is 21 dollars we're still up about seven percent or so and then we sold 60 percent of it at these highs so we did scale out now i'm looking for that next buy but watch that support if that support falls it might sense more weakness in intel and then intel might want to go down to the 18s which is technically where i'm looking for my next buy bigger buy like we bought the bigger buy over here is below 18 actually and we're also we're getting closer and closer to the earnings season so be mindful of that as well let's go to smci SCI is still stalled okay it really hasn't shown strength that it wanted to push off the support yet so technically i can't do much off that we do have support at 45 10 and resistance at 53 40 y'all know me if i do look to play it I'm going to want SMCI to go to 58 to 60. That's kind of like my target, but it's not showing signs that it wants to push up yet. So I'm just being patient with it and trying to see what it wants to do out of this range. Okay. Cause it could still drop and break that support. It tested it two times already. If you go to the 15 minute chart, it tested it two times, tested it here, push off, tested it here, push off. I feel like if it comes down and tested it again, it's probably going to break and SMCI is probably going to continue this crash down. So just be mindful of that, but watch the same levels. Nothing really has changed on the SMCI front. Let's go over Apple stock. So Apple stock had a big push today. I told y'all once it broke 231.60, then I'm going for what? The all-time highs on Apple stock. That's when we're going to start pushing to the highs. And guess what? Today, Apple did hit the all-time highs. We actually played it today, as you can see here. Apple calls right there. We scaled out about three times for over 33% gain. Some of the team got 40% and everything. That was the only play I did today. Okay, I didn't have to do much. It was very early, 16 minutes in the market opening, and we were done. This is why I say make sure you join the team. We got the Elite Elite Year Lifetime Memberships that comes with personal training, probably best bang for your buck, and also personal training by itself down here. Make sure you email me, willknowledge77gmail.com, if you have any questions. Prices go up in about six days. But, yeah, everything's available. You get access to the Discord and the private live streams lesson videos, bonus, everything. Okay. Make sure you join firstly in that description, but that's what we did on Apple today. So we played that upper movement this morning, this push. We actually, I'll show you exactly where we got calls. We got calls right in here and we took profits right in there. Right. So that was our 30%. Some of them got 40, some enter early and so forth. Cause I try to give y'all direction of the day, the most high probable stocks I'm looking to play and everything real directional, real info and, um, just monster. But yeah, that's the movie we did on Apple. So now that Apple is at all-time highs, that's pretty much it. There's not much to do on Apple right now. So I can clear the whole chart. We do have a support on Apple, okay? If that breaks, 
that is going to be my next potential play. I'm actually looking to play the downside now on Apple. So 228.40 is support. If that breaks, I believe Apple is going to be crashing down more, and I'm, I'm going to look to play puts on it. That's all I really kind of see for Apple right now in that range. And Meta is pretty nasty, I would say. There's really nothing to do on Meta. Um, yeah, it's just kind of nasty in the range that it's in now. Uh, Amazon had a big down movement, but it kind of retracted off of that. Nothing really to do on Amazon that I see. Kind of going over the bigger names. And Google, nothing really to do on Google right now either, okay? No really strong levels or clear plays or anything on Google that I like that will be optimal to add. Tesla, so Tesla is still stalled. Remember I told y'all, Tesla could, we need a, either a retracement higher, we need a continued crash, or Tesla's going to stall out, okay? If you don't believe me, go watch the video I made on Friday, well, Thursday, um, last week, the video I posted on Thursday about talking about Tesla, how it could stall because what? We have earnings next week. No. Yeah, earnings is next week on Wednesday, October 23rd. So the last earnings didn't do too good for Tesla stock. It crashed right after. This time it crashed after the robo taxi and we have earnings coming up again. So we're going to watch these two support levels at 213.20 and 207.80. If both of these break, I believe Tesla's going back down to below 180, okay? Which which will be a, actually a good buying opportunity. I would love to get more Tesla back in the 170s and 180s. That's a very good price level, especially if you believe in Tesla long term and everything that they're doing, robo taxi and everything. That's like the main thing that's kind of pushing Tesla um, to the future, really, and their cars, of course. But yeah, so that's pretty much it on Tesla support levels. Um, and that's pretty much, I'm not trying to do anything shorter term with Tesla. I don't see any plays on it. I'm not looking to buy any more long-term shares. We need Tesla to kind of break out this range. And also you need to know what Tesla does on its earnings. That's going to be very big. So we might as well just wait for that and be patient on that. Um, AMC, nothing really going on AMC. It's pretty much in a gutter. GameStop had a little bit of news today. They did partner with Professional Sports Authenticator for trading cards, uh, grading and select U.S. stores. The, re the company reported a surprise profit and holds significant cash and security. So that's a little bit of news. They really didn't get anything off of that. If you look at the five minute chart, nothing really pre-market. They had a big pop, but overall, the market really didn't do nothing. Y'all know me. I want GameStop to break 2275. That's when it gets interesting. OK, well, at least in my eyes. DJT, this is why I said you need to wait for a pull down. Guess what we got today? A nice big old pull down, right? It kind of came closer to the end of the day. I want to see if there's any news that came out of it. Uh, Trump media tonight these slumps after brief trading halt. They did have a halt on the downside, I'm assuming. Yeah, there's nothing really. Unless y'all know some news on DJT, let me know in the comment section down below. We'll kind of go over it. But other than that, there's not really, I don't see any news that's going on uh, on DJT. So with DJT, it did hit support. We have resistance at 3110 and support around 2560. If you look at the five minute chart, you see that resistance test, test, brought price down and look at the support hit. Beautiful support hit, bounce off that, okay? So technically it is the same levels on DJT and depending on how DJT moves tomorrow, you don't want it to break the support. If it breaks that support, it's going back down to like the 23s and 22s, okay? That's what you don't want. So if, if it holds the support tomorrow and it kind of stays elevated, that would be good for DJT to get up, get back up into the higher 30s, maybe even the 40s. So kind of watch out for that. That's the main thing I'll be watching for DHT is that support. Does it break? Today it didn't. Had a little bounce. But if it starts breaking tomorrow, that's going to sense more weakness. And then I'll just be patient because that means DJT is going to want to fall down more and I can just get it at lower prices. So that's how I'm kind of watching out for on DJT. Also, Funware had a huge pop today off of some news. Y'all see this Funware? It went to like $5 all the way like to $8, which is pretty crazy, by the way. Um, they had news of the Trump Association and Market Momentum. I think some news came out with that with Trump, and that kind of boomed them up. But they gave all that back up. So honestly, there's really nothing going on with Funware. I don't see any plays on it or anything clear um, right now. Also, let's go over the bonds. COT finally had this nice up movement. I was supposed to buy more bonds today. Um, I was just waiting for it to find a support. It has done that because we got the push off, but I forgot. So most likely tomorrow, AKY says like buying uh, Wednesday or whatever type, buying Wednesday. I'll be buying some more bonds tomorrow. I'll be buying some more TLT. Y'all know I want TLT to go all the way up to like 140s minimum. That's probably like over 60, 50 percent gain. So I'm buying some more bonds. Longer term play. I, fe I feel like these might be one of the bigger plays of 2025. And I'm also going to buy some more TMF tomorrow as well. Nice big pop. We already have shares of both of those. Um, again, as financial advice, all education, personal, don't trade that you're seeing this video. You will lose money. I'm just about YouTube. Um, TMF, I'm looking for this bad boy to go to minimum the 200, over 150 percent gains, probably 200 percent gains just off shares. Uh, so, yeah, looking to buy some more of that. 
Team F tomorrow as well. I'm also looking for big call options on TOT also. And then other stocks I'm looking at to buy heavy, of course, y'all know Disney. Looking for big call options on this one. It's just kind of installed, so I've been patient. Also, Nike, looking to buy this one more, but it's kind of installed, so I'm being patient as well. Um, y'all know the makeup industry, a lot of makeup industries are crashed down. So start looking at the industry of the stocks. They're getting pretty decent of their pricing, kind of like Ulta. I really want Ulta to go below 300, so it's not there yet. But there's some other stocks that we're actually looking to play in the Discord. Make sure you guys join the team. First in that description, and you'll know more about those because I probably won't go over those in the video. But they have to do with the makeup industry. So kind of watch out for that. Do we believe makeup's going anywhere? Probably not. So there's going to be some good opportunities in those sectors, okay? Also, BABA is still dropping. Remember I told y'all, don't chase this movement on BABA. We already bought BABA at the 87s. Again, you would have saw that. Make sure you join the team, first in the description. Um, and we caught the move, right? Up 30-something percent gains. So tomorrow, I'm going to sell the rest. I think I have about 15% left. We're still up like 10%. I'm going to sell the rest of the shares. And then you got to let this BABA drop. Wait till it finds support. Because once it finds support, either here or here, then we're going to wait for the bounce up somewhere off that support. And I feel like that's going to be the next buy of BABA. But for right now, it's still technically kind of too high. I told you all BABA was going to have a bigger pull down. That's exactly where we're in right now. So right now it's time to be patient, let it drop. And then off this drop, we'll see where it wants to build that next support area for the next buy on BABA. OK, so BABA's looking pretty good. Also, a stock I'm looking to buy is Boeing. I think Boeing is going to return back up to the 200s. Um, Maybe not this year, maybe next year, but sometime around within six months, I feel like it could return up to 200. It is a very vertical type of movement. Like whenever the stock moves, it moves like here, vertical, here, vertical, here, vertical. So it moves once it starts pushing up, right? Very vertical. So Boeing could be a possible big play I'm looking out for. We're going to be buying that one pretty soon. And they also have earnings coming up next week as well. So be mindful that we are starting to get in earnings seasons, okay? Gold, still bullish on gold, but it's kind of been a little sideways in this range right here. So I'm being patient on it, but I am looking for gold to push back up higher. Um, yeah, I'm kind of waiting for it to break like the 2050s. And then that might be the time I want to get back in gold for the higher prices to reach $22. And then the GLD uh, seems like this one, as long as it holds, see how it tested that 245, 245 turned into a support. As long as it's kind of holding that range, we do have new support at about 246. 70 this will be the stock i would play options on and gold will be the one i play shares on but gold still bullish um in my eyes let's go over the oil sector so oil bigger crash down i told y'all oil is still bearish we literally spelled out everything perfect once it broke 52 we're looking for a bigger retracement we got that i'm still bearish if it broke 57 10 of resistance then i turned short term bullish but it never broke that we also wanted to see once it broke 5375 i was going to get puts to go down i believe it's going back down to 48 dollars we are going back down there so basically i'm just looking for a setup for my put options for oxy to go down at 48 dollars oil is still bearish okay so we pretty much did that literally perfect this is also why i say never miss a video smash the like button make sure i get the video over 200 likes i appreciate it if you don't see it just go like it up and comment the stocks you guys want in tomorrow's video. Stay tuned because at the end, close to the end, we're going to go over the comments and go over stocks that have good analysts on it. Okay. But so 53.75 support broke. Now we're just kind of watching $53 by itself. That's your new support. But I'm kind of looking for the puts already, whether it continues crashing here or maybe it goes here. I'm looking for puts on that next retracement higher for OXY to go down to that $48 mark. Bitcoin, nice push on Bitcoin. And guess what? It's bringing the whole crypto market with it. You see, Ethereum starting to push up a little bit. If you look at Solana, you see Solana starting to push up a little bit. If you look at Dogecoin, Dogecoin, a little push already retracting a little bit, though. If you look at Fetch USD, which is one I want to play on the next run, too, little pop, but kind of came back down fairly quick. So Bitcoin is trying to push. It did break that shorter term resistance level. You have another shorter term resistance level right around 68,050. You could put one there, 68,000. So that's your new shorter term resistance level um, right there. We could change this support. Remember, I teach you how to find support and resistance levels. Very, very key in your trading. Um, 62,000. Nine. I'm going to round it up to about 990. That's your new shorter term support. But again, crypto gets interesting once it breaks 72,100 on Bitcoin. That's when it's going to be all hands on deck. Now, we already have like four positions on Bitcoin. We got Ethereum positions, a lot of positions and so forth. I do want to build some more positions. But remember, Bitcoin has came up here about five, six times 
in the last like six or seven months and it always retraced back down, 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 down. So once that breaks, that's when I feel like would be the next crypto bullish cycle. OK, so very, very big level. Kind of watch out for that, which brings me to what? Coinbase, baby. So Coinbase is already getting vertical. We're already up like 20% on Coinbase. I am looking to buy more, but I'm just looking to buy more on the retracement. Okay. So I basically need like a down day. That's when I'm kind of looking to buy more on Coinbase. So we already got shares. I think our average is like 160. Um, you'll see it whenever you join the team. Our average is like 160 something, like 164, I think, 166, somewhere around there. So we're already up about 19, 20%. And trust me, I'm looking for way more than that. I do believe Coinbase is going to reach up to about 300 on this next run up, on this next crypto bullish cycle. I say it all the time. The more Bitcoin goes up, the more people trade Bitcoin, the more they go to Coinbase to buy Bitcoin, the more Coinbase makes off money on fees, the more that boosts up Coinbase earnings. And AKA, you get a vertical move on Coinbase like this, this, and this. So I'm just building that. So once the vertical move happens, you pretty much chill and just enjoy the profits. So MSTR, it's crashing down. That's why I say this is the second big day down on uh, MSTR. It doesn't really interest me. Um, I would actually like for it to break the support at 187.55. And then actually, I would like for it to go back down to the 170s. That might be the time I try to get shares on MSTR. I would, I would kind of like a bigger pull down. It's still, it's still above the all-time high it made on the last cycle, right? It's just a little too high for me. Then also hood, just a little too high for me, okay? Even though they could be plays, I'd rather just focus on Coinbase for now. It's just cheaper um, and bigger gains to the higher side than these. So they're still good. If they have potentials, I'll look to play them. And also HUT. HUT would have to break $14.25. Then I'm looking to trade to about $18. That's like a shares play. But for now, it's kind of just been stalled out for a while. On the next crypto cycle, it's going to do very good, just like it did the last crypto cycle. Y'all see that move? HUT went from like $7 all the way to $20. It's probably going to go past this and reach maybe in the mid 20s, 24, 25 on the next cycle. So I think it'll do pretty good. We just got to wait for that next crypto cycle to come in, if I'm being honest. In phase, let's check in phase, the energy side, still crashing, cool. Oh, in phase below 90 is actually where I wanted to start uh, getting some shares. So we're almost there, actually. They also have earnings next week on Tuesday. Just be mindful of that. Um, but yeah, I'm looking for that to go below 90. We're almost there. Then I'll probably start building a, a position on in phase. So we are getting very close to that area right there. Um, PayPal, I'm looking to build more shares. I think once they get more overseas, they also own Vimo. They'll do better minimum. Looking for them to go to about the 140s, which is close to 100% gain just off shares. They're also about to have earnings on October 29th, so watch out for them. That's more of a longer term um, type of hold. Also, Arm had some news come out today with Intel and AMD. Their um, team up to confront. They were doing something. It was some news with them, but Arm had a big pull down. There's really no play on it. Um, Unless it broke 167.50, then it might be something on ARM. But let's go ahead and check. Oh, also let's go over the SP100. I almost forgot. So SP100, a decent down day today. I'm still waiting on a bigger crash. We haven't got that yet. Maybe it's about to start now. But honestly, there's not much to do on the SP500. We do have support at about 569.65. And then if you wanted to put a smaller support, you could probably put a smaller support right around like 578. So let's do this. If we want to put a smaller support, we could put a support. Right around 578. That would be your small support. You can watch out for that tomorrow. If that starts breaking, that's probably going to sense some more weakness in the market. And we're probably going to continue going down tomorrow. But if it kind of holds, then we might stable out or maybe try to retrace back higher. So watch that 578. Also tomorrow, which will be Wednesday, October 16th, we really don't have any news. Okay, all the news, all the earnings starts Thursday. Thursday is going to be a big day in the market. We have major news and we have major earnings. So be prepared for that. Hopefully Thursday moves a lot. That's really when we get the easier plays in, okay? So just make sure you don't forget to join the team. Lifetime Elite Elite Year. Price is about to go up. Uh, Lifetime does include personal training. And Lifetime Elite Year and personal training, you can all do monthly plans if you want to, okay? But make sure you question. Um, if you have any questions, email me, willnowlessumps.gmail.com. But let's go over y'all comments, okay? So, oh, Palantir. Almost forgot. Palantir drop actually went below 42. Now, I was not watching it. But that is what I was waiting to buy again. So I'll see how it moves tomorrow. It did go below and buy enable. I kind of missed it today. We were focused on other things. But I'll see how it moves tomorrow. But technically, it did everything I was hoping out for. I was looking for the pullover below 42. It literally hit that. Let me see how long it stayed below 42. Oh, my God. Look at that. Beautiful below 42. That was a decent 
buy area. But I'll see how it is tomorrow on Palantir to see if I want to buy some more or maybe it continues dropping. But we'll see because I kind of missed the entry tomorrow. But maybe tomorrow it might drop more. It might even give me a better entry on Palantir. But that's what I'm kind of waiting out for. Let's see other stocks. Hems. This is more of a healthcare type of movement. The all-time high was like what twenty-five dollars. We're actually close to all-time high. Very vertical and very sporadic movements in here. So there's really no clear anything that I would see on it. I would say maybe resistance. We're kind of resistance now, right around twenty-two eighty. So watch that. If it starts breaking twenty-two eighty, it might want to go twenty-two. It might want to go past like twenty-four dollars and maybe even hit all-time highs. Just kind of watch out for that. Um, Dogecoin, y'all wanted levels on Dogecoin. I'll add that in tomorrow's video because the crypto market is about to get a little more interesting, especially once Bitcoin breaks that big resistance level. We can go over SoFi as well. SoFi stock is actually very vertical. It's a little too high. We have resistance at 1015. Y'all can see the price literally closed at that resistance. Look, it didn't want to go past that resistance level. It tried to back down, tried to back down, kept touching it, tried to back down, tried to back down. So 1015 is still the resistance. And just like Baba, just like all these other stocks that um, are vertical, you need that bigger pull down. That's when it gets a little more juicy of the bigger pull down. So I would say be patient and wait for a bigger pull down. So SoFi and Nova Credit Boost Partnership, new cash flow analytics of transform loan approval. So I think SoFi has some news with it that kind of helped them push up as well. <laughs> That's why y'all need to comment the stock so we could check them. BW, uh, this one really only goes down, honestly. So I wouldn't play this one. And it's a penny stock. I'll probably let that one go and put my focus on some other things that are a little bit better. But other than that, thank you guys for watching the video. Make sure you guys are on the team first in that description. Make sure you guys follow me on Instagram at will.knowledge. Make sure you go like the new post that I did down there in the greens, you know what I'm saying? Then always remember, no circulation to buy or sell anything. Just for educational purposes only. So do not trade anything you see here in the video. Catch you guys on the next one. Bye.